It is Wednesday, the 12th day of October 2011, and this is going to be another very special edition of InfoWars Nightly News, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here at InfoWarsNews.com, and of course, PrisonPlanet.tv, and then streaming out and leaking out to millions across the web. And now we've confirmed, even though we haven't tried to syndicate yet, that some TV stations across the United States, and even cable systems, are beginning to carry the transmission. So that'll be a new job, collating how they're all getting it live or taped, archived off the web, and re-airing it as we prepare to get the satellite and fiber optic uplinks coming up here in the next few months. And by the way, we are announcing our fifth annual Money Bomb that's going to be coming up in uh, November 3rd. That's on a Wednesday. We usually build it up more, and that's just one of the supplements that we've uh, become very dependent on to fund this operation because we're not like MSNBC that got hundreds of millions of taxpayer banker bailout money to spew their anti-family, anti-Second Amendment, anti-private property garbage. We are here because you support us and because you choose to subscribe at prisonplanet.tv. Okay, let me get moving here because we've got Lord Christopher Monckton coming up on the draconian uh, Soviet-style carbon taxes coming to Australia. He's coming up in the second half of the transmission uh, tonight. Um, I sent Rob Jacobson out today because we've gotten so many reports around the country and here in Austin that if you go to Occupy Wall Street events and you have a Ron Paul shirt or anything, they come up and they say, your kind didn't want it here, boy. Get out of town. Uh, so we got some video of that coming up. Uh, we're also going to be getting into some big developments on the Fast and Furious front. Uh, and a lot more tonight here at InfoWars Nightly News. And I just want to add again, it's you, the viewers, that make this possible. And it's the crew. I keep telling the crew, hey, it doesn't have to be an hour or two hours long every night. Uh, some nights we can do 30 minutes. But they brought a lot more to the table today. So it'll be another probably hour long uh, transmission this evening. Not like the hour and a half, though, last night. And remember, it's teleprompter free. It's real analysis, real opinion, real commentary, real research, real people. That's what InfoWars Nightly News uh, is all about. Okay, going back a few months ago, uh, I exposed Rick Perry for the carbon taxing, gun grabbing, Al Gore loving, Hillary Care loving, Bilderberg attending, NAFTA superhighway land grabbing globalist that he is. And since then, his meteoric plunge has begun. Not just because I exposed him, other people discovered uh, what was happening as well. But we did hit the barbed wire first. And a lot of people would email me and say, this can't be true. And we would say, go look at our published articles on it. And Drudge Report covered it and others. Now we've got Mitt Romney, the carbon tax, anti-gun, uh, Obama healthcare writing person. We've got to get the word out on him. But the new front runner is Herman Cain. And this guy is a puppet. And the people pulling the strings are the private shareholders of the Federal Reserve. Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Queen of England, Dutch royalty. You know the, the suspects here that run this global criminal system. And Herman Cain, in the debate last night with Ron Paul, really, really, uh, well, they've got a term for it. It's called blowing it or screwing the pooch. Uh, he, he really disintegrated uh, in front of everyone if we use this information. And you'll notice Ron Paul, you know, they ask him, what would you do about the Federal Reserve? Who would you get as a new person at the Federal Reserve? And Herman Cain endorses Alan Greenspan, the guy that got rid of Glass-Steagall, sold the derivatives, allowed this depression to take place, and the guy that recommended Ben Bernanke be appointed. So Cain, former head of the Federal Reserve in Kansas City, very powerful position, big made man insider, he threw Bernanke under the bus, but then praised the godfather of our current economic uh, crisis, Greenspan, and, and, and then, of course, he's asked, who would you appoint if you become president? He said, well, I've got a few names, but I'm not going to say. And Ron Paul says, spoken like a true insider. Then it moves on to Herman Cain getting in Ron Paul's face. That's coming up next. But first, let's uh, go to him endorsing Alan Greenspan. The way Alan Greenspan oversaw the Fed and the way he coordinated with the way he coordinated with all of the Federal Reserve banks 
I think that it worked fine back in the early 1990s. <laughs> Spoken like a true insider. <laughs> um, no, uh, Alan Greenspan was a disaster. Uh... <laughs> Hit pause. We're going to go back to it in a minute. There is no doubt, no one who studies economics at even a moron level, a third grade level, would deny that Alan Greenspan got rid of Glass-Steagall along with Clinton and the Republicans. Um, Robert Rubin, Larry Summers, Warren Buffett called for it. And then they come back now and then offer all their new taxes, all their new controls. This is the guy with the 999. Of course, you flip that, you know what you get, but you're also still going to have the FICA tax. So you've, you've got the Social Security tax, the income tax, the VAT, the uh, sales tax. That's really 9999. And by the time they jack those up, it'll be 20, 20, 20, 20, and maybe you'll end up with 20% of what you have when they're done with you. But uh, this is what private central banks all over the world want, new mechanisms. When we got the Federal Reserve back in 1913, uh, they set up the income tax that same year. We built this country without the income tax with all the other taxes. Now let's get to him caught lying in a big way. That's, that's why the graphic says that. Uh, Paul Watson wrote an article about this titled Fed Insider Kane Caught in Brazen Debate Live. You can go to Google Books online and see the subpages. He called Ron Paul supporters ignorant, saying the Federal Reserve uh, is unconstitutional. Of course, it's totally unconstitutional. Congress can't give up its, uh, Congress can't give up its uh, congressional powers. And still worse, in his own book, Kane dismissed them as stupid and ludicrously suggested that Paul campaign was deliberately sending out supporters to harass Kane with questions about the Federal Reserve. No, a year ago when Kane was a stealth candidate, people would go and say, you headed up the Federal Reserve. You know, uh, you know this thing is what created the tens of trillions uh, in derivatives that we've been forced to pay off. And we've got a few clips coming up also of Herman Cain on Rusty Humphreys and other shows saying, listen, we're constitutional. You know, the Congress gave us this power. Well, they passed it with three senators in 1913, and it's the same Congress who said black people weren't humans or Chinese couldn't own property on the West Coast. I mean, you know, you know, to claim Congress did this, Congress passed the Super Congress waiving its power. I mean, Congress has let Obama launch all these new wars without congressional approval. The point is the Federal Reserve engineered where we are today. And I know I'm talking a lot. It's just that these clips are just too incredible. Uh, and, and, and then he gets in Ron Paul's face and says, you know, how dare you? I didn't say you're stupid. And, and I've always said we should audit the Fed. But then we've got a Neil Bortz clip where he was filling in for Neil Bortz saying there's all sorts of internal audits. That's like saying, hey, Jeffrey Dahmer, he, he, he's running his own apartment. Let's not look in the refrigerator, even though some kids have come up missing in the area. Uh, in fact, I ought to try that next time the IRS that pays money the Federal Reserve calls up, the tax collector for this guy, and says, we want to have an audit, I'll say, but I'm doing internal audits. There's no need. He said this last year. Now there's been a partial audit and 16 plus trillion stolen, paid to private individuals. But Herman Cain, he, notice he adds the proviso, and that's most important. I'm trying to dissect this pile of BS is hard. It's just, there's so much of it, it's all ridiculous. Notice Herman Cain says in here, to his knowledge, there's nothing hidden. It's like Sergeant Schultz saying, I know nothing. Let's go to the next group of clips. Here it is. First of all, you have misquoted me. I did not call you or any of your people ignorant. I don't know where that came I'll from. Get it for you. All right. Now, so you got to be careful of the stuff that you get off the Internet, because that's just not something that I have said. Well, there's the quote right there. One of them where he called him stupid, but there's the other where he called him ignorant. I mean, I think that uh, speaks for itself. And again, that's just one of the quotes. We link to the others right here. Now, let's go ahead and go to the real line with him saying it's constitutional. And, and, and the big telltale sign is he says, we don't want 535 uh, people debating in, in a, de a, de a debating committee. This is his real Achilles heel, where he says, we want a Federal Reserve running this in secret. We don't want 530 something, you know, people in a debate in a debating committee. Think about this: a debating committee. These are our elected representatives, hundreds and hundreds of them, so that there can be a full debate. 
And here he is just saying, oh, we don't want a debating committee. Who needs elected representatives that actually represent your local area? By the way, the Federal Reserve in 1913 didn't just get rid of uh, constitutional taxation and bring in the private income tax for the Federal Reserve. They also got rid of Texas and other states' legislatures, all 44 states at the time, actually electing the senator at the state level. You would elect the representatives, then they would have a vote in the legislature and send the state representative who was the U.S. senator to create a checks and balance between the federal and local government. So the Federal Reserve also got rid of that. So we can understand that instinct of the private bankers to, to want to get rid of Congress and get rid of the senators being creatures of the state. So uh, I've talked a lot about it. Here it is. You were the chairman of Kansas City. Tell me a little about the Federal Reserve and why that should or should not be something we should worry about. First of all, it's not unconstitutional. What happened was in 1913, the Congress of the United States designated the authority to the Federal Reserve to be created. So how can that be unconstitutional? Congress has to pass the laws. Congress sets up the authority to do things. That's what they did. I would rather fix the Federal Reserve and get it to do the mission that it was charged with rather than putting it back in the hands of a committee of 535. We've got guys like... Stop it and back it up five seconds. You are hearing Herman Cain. Defend the Federal Reserve, run by the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, private shareholders, putting America in debt, putting the world in debt, stolen tens of trillions just in the last few years, and he's saying, I would rather put it in the hands of the Federal Reserve secretly, and I've got Greenspan on Lair News Hour saying they're above the law and secret, than a committee of 535 contempt. Listen, the Federal Reserve runs this country. Let me tell you what Herman Cain's really thinking. We took over in 1913, and we got rid of the senators being creatures of the states. We got rid of states' rights. We brought in an income tax, and you're our slaves, and get used to it. That's the way it is. And this Congress, I, I piss on them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just kind of get wound up by nighttime, folks. It's more of a family show during the day, and I'm trying to make this one family. But, I mean, there's only so... I was talking to Rob Dew while we were playing that clip, and I'm like, I I'm sorry I'm going too long covering all this, but how do you dissect absolute treason and garbage? You got this committee of 535, get rid of the Congress, the bankers, Rothschilds, they're running it all. Get down on your knees and lick my boots. I'm Herman Cain, and I killed Abel, 666, baby. Look at me, I got sharp teeth. I'm a predator, and I'm coming for you. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. I was telling you, Marcos, not to make fun of him earlier. I can't help it. I mean, the level of horse crap I'm being fed here. Let's get back to the rest of 535 Congress people. Get them the hell out of my way. Damn Congress Federal Reserve. Back to it. The evil from the devil or something. But he doesn't say what you replace it with. This I is what the people who want to get rid of the Federal Reserve don't talk about. <laughs> I'm just marveling. Isn't there more? Go to the Neil Bortz clip about there are so many internal audits, audits that I don't even know what to do. Let's go Missouri back. Already has so many internal audits. Audits is ridiculous. I don't know where why people think we're going to learn this great amount of information by auditing the Federal Reserve. There's no hidden secrets going on in the Federal Reserve, to my knowledge. Hit pause. And this I is too rich. I mean, back it up. This is like Rick Perry being a male cheerleader, Al Gore supporter, carbon tax supporter, gun grabber, hand over the highways, Bilderberg attendee, Hillary Clinton, socialist care supporter. I mean, there's no end to this horse manure. I'm going to stop it. I'm trying to control myself. But, I mean, you got a Federal Reserve top general up here feeding you a solid line and looking at Ron Paul and going, how dare you? How dare you say I said these things when he said them? And there he is. It's ridiculous how many internal audits there are. It's ridiculous how many internal audits Al Capone has. We don't need the outside looking at us. Well, look at the White House shipping guns into Mexico. This is a good government. 
See, I'm not a teleprompter reader. I'm not a robot. So I'm exposing. I don't think Herman Cain's a robot either. This guy's a mad liar like I've never seen in my life. To look at Ron Paul and say, I can't believe you said that about me. I've never said there shouldn't be an audit. And here he is. It's ridiculous how many internal checks we have. My God, get rid of that Congress right away. I, some kind of Bolshevik if you're not for getting rid of the Congress. All right, let's go back to Mr. wants to start all these new taxes, Kane. Let's go back to Mr. No Kane. Hidden secrets going on in the Federal Reserve, to my knowledge. And I tell to my people, knowledge, you know, we've got 12 Federal Reserve banks. F you find out which district you're in, call them up and go for And pause there. again. We've sent reporters out by themselves to the Federal Reserve. You show up with 500 people, they're real nice. You show up real nice across the street with your camera, they walk out with firearms. We're going to take you to jail, boy. We're federal agents. And meanwhile, fake federal seals, buildings look like federal buildings. I'm a federal agent. All fraud. <laughs> Just all scams. 999. Nine, nine. We're going to rape you nine times with an income tax. We're going to rape you nine times with a VAT tax. We're going to rape you nine times with a sales tax. And we're going to rape you because he's lying to you about getting rid of FICA. We're going to rape you with that. And conservatives are lined up going... <laughs> Gang, rape me. Take all my rights away, Lord Cain. I'm sorry. Uh, let's go back to him going, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's like Sylvester uh, the cat. It's ridiculous that Tweety Bird thinks I want to eat him. I mean, I am here to help you. Let's go back to it. F you find out which district you're in, call them up and go from there. Call up the Federal Reserve and they'll uh, feed you a large load of you know what. Okay. By the way, I'm Herman Cain and I will save you. Okay. I mean, I, this is like torture having to listen to this guy. I mean, it, it, it is just too rich. All right. Uh, let's go ahead now. Uh, speaking of uh, Ron Paul, uh, Ron Paul has won first, second, and third place in every major poll out there. And then when he wins first, second, or third, they just won't mention his name. It's like, number one was this, number three was that, no mention of Ron Paul. And we looked at a whole index of internet polls, scientific polls. He got first, second, or third in every one of them. But, as the examiner shows right there, but even though he showed up in the top three candidates in the other scientific polls for last night's debate, it was the same thing. When the mainstream corporate horror media, the CIA Washington Post, amply named The Fix, The Fix is in, they listed Herman Cain, Newt Gingrich, uh, and others. So uh, Mitt, now, 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 when I checked the poll, I think Newt Gingrich got, what, 2%? And Ron Paul's like 16 or something? I mean, I mean, the point is, <laughs> there you go again, same thing over and over again. Now, speaking of Ron Paul, I have tried to be uh, deliberative. I have tried to deliberate on this Occupy America for the Soviet Union movement. I mean, Occupy for lazy homeless people movement. I mean, trendy, know-it-all, spoiled, rotten, snot-nosed kids running around telling you what to do. I'm sorry. Occupy Wall Street. But I'm done with them. Matt Medina in San Antonio has confirmed. They came up and said, no Alex Jones, no Ron Paul. Shut up. I've confirmed it all over the country. Uh, I've confirmed it on video. And Darren McBreen's son, who is just a patriot, last week went down to Occupy Austin and was walking by with a Ron Paul sign, and the woman on the microphone, he didn't have a camera at the time, said, get out of here, no Ron Paul, no Ron Paul, the fellow reserves on the problem. And so we keep, we keep getting these reports. And so I told Jacobson today, I said, go down there with your iPhone and uh, see what happens. Jacobson shows up and within five minutes, a guy shows up with a bunch of pizzas, giving them to the Occupy Austin people, probably about 50 folks down there. And I'm sorry, I looked at the video. They, they look like they got about five brain cells between 50 of them. And he goes down there, and this guy comes over and puts his arm around him and says, listen, this isn't a political movement. You know, your Ron Paul thing needs to go. And, of course, Jacobson blows up because he's not a wimp and says, I got free speech. And the guy's like, hey, you know, go away. My name's this and that. I'm a Ron Paul supporter, classic political stuff. Then there's weird audio of him going, I got $20. Who wants $20? The guy looks like a cop. All I know is that 
Then I went and talked to Breen and I said, call your son. He double checked. He goes, no, no, it was a woman saying, get out of there on the, on the, on, on, on the microphone. So my issue here is, you're just walking by a city park. My tax money, your tax money paid for. And these guys come out, and in the case of McBreen's son, said, just get out of here, period. You're not welcome. Same thing happened to Matt Medina down in San Antonio. These reports are coming in everywhere. And Rob should have played possum to let the guy fully explain himself. And the guy says his name. We bleeped it out in case he's using somebody else's name or in case he doesn't realize the ramifications of this. And Jacobson shot the video this this way, so we had to flip it that way for the screen so it creates some jiggling effect. So it's, 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 it's hard to watch, but I'm giving the Occupy Austin people fair warning. I'm sending a bunch of people down there in Ron Paul outfits tomorrow and the next day so we can really document what you're doing because you're claiming we don't have a political movement, but... Get the rich people and march on Republican billionaire donors' houses in New York, and we want to get the 1%. Number one, the American people are 5% of the world's population. We have more than half the wealth, or right at half the wealth. So this is a very dangerous precedent. But we have confirmed that uh, there's people handing free food out and money to people, and they don't want Ron Paul there. They say they don't want to be political, but they're basically pushing Democratic White House talking points. So uh, here's that video. I'm voting for Ron Paul too. This is not a uh, this is not a political movement. Yes, this is, sir. I was just I was, I was just saying uh, I think it is because Ron Paul represents ending the Fed. And, he sure does. And ending the Fed, well, in hey, my belief, hey, in my head. If you want if you want to record this, my name is David. And I'm voting for Ron Paul. This are, is not about Ron Paul. I okay? think it is. Uh, why I'm just you, letting you know. All right, well, I'm here and I think it is. My opinion is just as good as yours. Thank you. And I deserve my so. freedom of speech. If you want to be a to me, I'll promise you I'll be a to you. I'm Go for it, man. You know, are, you, are you threatening me? You know. Are you threatening me, sir? If I was threatening you, you'd know it. I brought all this pizzas to be okay? You do it. You brought all the pizzas, boys? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd you get the money from, man? You're the one asking me not to speak. Not, I'm not the other way around. Hit pause. My idea of hell would be 10 trillion years in a park with hippies crapping all over the place and having sex with each other like they're doing up in New York City uh, with people bringing them free pizza and stuff. And then them all ninnying over if you get a piece of pizza or whatever. Because the guy's like, I'm the one that brought the pizza. And, 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 and then he goes into this clip of, I got $20. Who wants $20? Again, my issue here is that we have confirmed all over the country there's one thing that's not allowed anywhere near these things, and that's Ron Paul, because he actually identifies the real threat. And that tells you all you need to know about Occupy Wall Street, Occupy Austin, Occupy whatever, is that the, the grassroots may be good, but I've got another article here. Occupy LA speaker, violence will be necessary to achieve our goals. And you go talk to them, they're leftists who want me to turn my guns in so they can have their violence against me. Turn your gun in, we're coming with us. Everything's great. Uh, finish up with Jacobson's clip where the guy's in the background talking about, I got $20, who wants $20? And again, this happened to McBreen's son. It happened back when they went back out there with the daughter. I'm sending them all out there tomorrow. And I told McBreen, who's out there right now, I told him, I said, play possum. I'm giving them fair warning. So we're just going to sit there and take it and see what they say. Because they're like, you don't walk by a city park around here. You understand? We occupy Wall Street. Obama, baby. Let's finish up the club. Well, 
Well, there's a view into hell. A bunch of misguided people calling for collectivism. That's what they're nationally doing with some guy saying, you got a Ron Paul sign. How, this isn't political. God almighty, I just can't even believe this. Uh, how far does this have to go? So we're coming down there and we're calling for true constitutionalists to go to all these events as Kokesh did up in D.C. And he was told, you don't even videotape the city park. This city park is ours. America is ours. We're liberal. No freedom. Everybody's like, oh my God, you're God. You are king. Soviet Union. October Red Scare. Take over. All right. Um, I'm looking at Jacobson out there right now. Jacobson, I can't believe you even tried to be in the, in, in the level of these people. You were up there with like St. Michael flapping around in heaven. Like, let's document cam shot from up there right through the Skynet news system. There is Jacobson. Jacobson, come in here behind me with your Ron Paul shirt. This was just hours ago that a thought criminal, and, and again, I said, within five minutes he was told, boy, this ain't political. This is nothing but a cutout for Obama, basically. But I like Ron Paul. Here, show folks your, your shirt. Right, here we go. Get over here. Let's just get that out of there. Look at the evil. Uh, I mean... There it is. Everywhere this is decried. Republicans, Democrats, mainline media, they hate it. Now, now Ron, Rob, obviously, you, you turn the camera on quickly because they, they attack so quickly you didn't know. But McBreen said it, his son, they were on the speaker saying, get out of here, even as he walked by on the sidewalk. You don't walk in America on a sidewalk mm -hmm. with Ron Paul because they're so into democracy. There were very few people there, Alex. I didn't even expect to see it. And the guy walked up to me within like three minutes, five minutes, just putting his arm around me. So what's the talking point by the folks that bring the money and the free pizza? It reminds me of when I caught uh, that guy paying off the black guys to testify against the Second Amendment. It's the same thing. You ever seen that footage? Yeah. Uh, here's some pizza, here's some money. He's the nice guy. He's the and he's nice like, guy. And let me come here. I got let some me tell you, advice. it's like, get out of here, right now, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But here's some pizza. Here's a little. You can money. do that to me too if you want. Uh, get out of here. Uh, uh, get out of here. You're a good guy. Right. Let me tell you, you know, we don't want you to be in the river. Oh, Jacob, say anything else? No, it was no shock to. Uh, uh, it was no shock that this guy uh, came up to me. I mean, with such few people, you wouldn't expect. But and you said, I asked you, you said you were brother about four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes. I but see, you see, if you'd have groveled, you'd have got the full story. Mm -hmm. I, I understand. Yeah. You're like, Amelia, no, buddy, I'll do what I want. Right. But right. I mean, if you'd have just like, oh, it was just, help me, I'm weak. <laughs> It was just so impulsive, you know, the guy's like, you can't speak here, it's not a political event, all I see are political signs left and right of me. Uh, Ron Paul was like, well, who are you to tell me, you know? That was my instinctual... But Herman Cain says it's ridiculous. I know. If I, he never attacked Ron Paul. If I showed up with a Herman Cain uh, shirt, they probably would have, you know, fanned me in, had a lift me up. Uh, maybe not. Obama, yes. Yeah. Well, Rob, listen, we've got to send our people all over the country to show this. Because it's like a vampire to a uh, cross when they see this thing. And it wasn't very difficult. The guy actually split. I was there for another 45 minutes. I couldn't find him in a very thin... But I like to, like, put the arm around. <laughs> Let me tell you. You know, you might want to... He was my friend. He was, he, you know, he was my buddy at that point. And uh, he was just telling me how... Uh, they deal with political messages. Well, no, that. they just want to show a bunch of folks bitching about capitalism and Wall Street instead of crony inside monopolists. And so it's like, listen, this is a cutout to project what we want on it. Get out of here. Don't actually bring a political goal. People keep asking, where's the goal? The goal is just to get everybody fighting with each other. Right, and I think there are a lot of people there with a goal, but what they project to people is there's no goal. There's, it's a big backdrop. It's a big set for TV. They got their guys in there. They make a message. They tell people to get out of there. But it's everywhere in the country they say, Ron Paul people, get out of here. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a talking point. I think what they're doing... It's no matter where you go in the country, it's a guy shows up and says... I think what they're doing is they're creating a set... And uh, they use the people as a backdrop. They project their messages, you know. I can't believe, listen, 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 admit you're an extremist. You sure. you tried to walk around in downtown Austin with a Ron Paul shirt. It's crazy, man. I know. What do you think, this is America? <laughs> I know, support the guy who I want to vote for, you know. He's just, 
He's only like one of the most major political uh, candidates going right now. I mean, who, who am I to uh, oh, t-shirt with the guy who I support, you know? And he does represent Texas. That's our state rep here. It's true. I mean, what was I thinking? And uh, I'm, I'm glad. He's uh, our congressional representative for Texas. I'm glad that man showed up and put his arm around me. And well, you've seen Jacobson. I, I'm going to apologize even having you here. Listen, I think that guy was right. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, yeah, just get out of here. Yeah, don't show that around here. Well, um. We're going back down there tomorrow. And how about Ron Paul supporters, First Amendment supporters, constitutional show up in mass tomorrow, uh, three o'clock tomorrow, down there, and just say, "Look, this isn't Mao Zedong's party. This isn't Pol Pot's party. This isn't Alos Hitler's party. This is America's party, and we're going to talk about real issues." What about Che Guevara? He would tell Rob to get out of there. Now, let's go ahead and finish up with this big stack of news here. Oh, yeah, let's get into the big news. You know, I happen to have Kurt Haskell on today, and he broke the fact that he's going to civilly sue now because the feds admittedly got this guy on the airplane. You know, uh, he's pled guilty a day after he said, two days after he said, he would call Kurt Haskell as his only witness. Well, now, uh, Mutalib clearly, as, as Kurt said a few nights ago here on InfoWars Only News on Monday night, that was Monday night he was on, right? Yeah, it was Monday night Kurt was here. Kurt was his only witness, and uh, that was being used as a bargaining chip because they didn't want the guy that saw the U.S. government get him on the plane there. Uh, so that was the quickest way to get this guy a lenient uh, sentence or whatever weird chicanery uh, was going on there. So big breaking news here at InfoWars.com. Uh, now continuing uh, shifting gears in a similar area, right on time uh, as um, Attorney General... Holder got in trouble. Uh, the head of the FBI, of course, really appreciates the comic relief. Uh, Holder tries misdirection. And he's saying, in fact, put that graphic back up. That's, that's, that, that's worth 10,000 words. Those just a uh, few words there. He says, the Iranians are in league with the cartel, not us. And, of course, the head of the FBI says, good one because we predicted they'd stage some chicanery. It's announced two days ago that there's going to be subpoenas, which were issued today, for Holder, who's been caught uh, in emails lying about not knowing about Fast and Furious. Part of a long history of uh, absconding with the truth and uh, engaging in perjury to Congress and to federal courts, Oklahoma City, Mark Rich, pardons, you name it. Uh, and so now they are exploiting the dubious terror case of uh, a attack by Iran, and they admit with no proof that Iran was working with Mexican drug cartels to blow up the Saudi embassy and assassinate people in D.C. So see, they were shipping tens of thousands of guns into Mexico to the drug cartels to be their friend to keep their eye on Iran. So it's okay that Holder did that, and then of course tried to use it to ban the Second Amendment in America. He's fighting Al-Qaeda, he's fighting Iran, He's fighting jihadis, and Obama's giving Libya to al-Qaeda, but that's okay. The point is, they've done this to keep us all safe, and Kurt Nemo writes about it. Will U.S. exploit dubious terror case on Iran attack? And the answer is yes. Here's another headline, Kurt Nemo. U.S. Iran plotted with Mexican drug cartel to assassinate Saudi ambassador. And they admit in the article, there's no proof of that, but hey, it's a good story. So see now, Holder's fighting Mexican cartels. He's not giving them the guns and shipping the cocaine in that's come out in uh, federal court. And again, Mueller says, good one. I mean, there's nothing these American people won't believe. Keep them in the dark and feed them, you know what, like mushrooms. But it's also come out that people are being put on enemies list. Came out in the news two years ago, I'm on the Obama enemies list, uh, that uh, people that, uh, major journalists that have, we have these articles up at Infowars.com, that have sources inside the White House, it's come out the White House was running this, say, Hillary, the master of Oklahoma City, the master of Waco, the master of so much more uh, that uh, she's part of that. And if you talk about her shipping guns into Mexico, uh, that uh, you're an enemy, enemy of the republic. Now, finally, here, we have a story dealing with uh, lemonade stands. Because while the real criminals run around having a good time, uh, in D.C., they're announcing one-year jail sentences for people selling lemonade without a license. Ten-cent cups of uh, lemonade are facing a uh, 
year in jail. I think that's totally reasonable. And, and they're getting an extra 180 days for refusing to a urine test. So, uh, yeah, the government admits they ship thousands of guns to Sinaloa cartel and ship in, ship in drugs. That's totally reasonable. And I think it's reasonable these people go to jail for the rest of their lives for selling lemonade. That is freedom. And Herman Cain cares about us, and so does Obama, and so does Clinton, and so does, um, so does Mitt Romney. So uh, that's going on. Uh, we're going to go to break and come back uh, with Lord Christopher Monckton on the important subject here at InfoWars Nightly News of the Enviro priest class creating their whole guilt trip and selling a police state in its name, Australia. Dilling Pohl has reported that the Telegraph is committing suicide and members of the Australian Parliament that criticize this are being drug off the stage. Uh, we're going to go to break and come back with Lord Christopher Monckton tonight. Stay with us, it's InfoWars Nightly News. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD Sign us under attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. It is InfoWars Nightly News, the second segment tonight on this Wednesday, October 12, 2011 transmission. Yesterday on the radio, I was joined by Lord Christopher Monckton, inventor, researcher, journalist, top advisor uh, to Margaret Thatcher, to discuss the incredible developments with the power grab going on in the Eurozone and the fact that former British Prime Minister John Major, the architect of the treaty that brought the UK in uh, to that monstrosity without a vote came out and basically decried it and said it was time for England to get out of it. Um, and we'll talk to him a, a little bit about that at the end of the interview. But the main reason he's here to uh, join us tonight is to break down the latest developments uh, on what really is the number one issue facing free humanity. That is the collectivist uh, that are a fascist group that have repackaged tyranny uh, in a velvet glove of environmental guilt tripping. And they've been proven to be abject frauds, uh, but they don't care. They move forward, and the front-line battleground is Australia. Now, here in the U.S., they couldn't pass carbon taxes uh, against select corporations, so Obama just did it through the EPA jackboots. Uh, but that's being fought back. But in Australia, they already put in carbon taxes a few years ago with devastating effect, taking land off use, taxes on cattle and sheep farmers. Uh, it's really enraged the, the Aussies. I've seen polls of 70 to 90 percent in that range. And you've seen governments come and go who support it. But just like with Cameron, uh, continuing what Tony Blair and others did in the UK, it's the same story in Australia, just like Mitt Romney supports the carbon tax and is the is the Republican front runner. There's no way to get rid of these people. They just keep coming back and back and back because it's a total global power grab tax scheme. And uh, protesters did disrupt the uh, question time after carbon bill passed the lower house. James Dillingpole, writing for the Telegraph in England, had the headline "Australia commits suicide." We talked to him on the radio today, so I thought we'd get Lord Monckton on about this. And see if he agrees with Dilling Poll's statement that it's Australia committing national suicide. And then I want to get to all the other developments with these people because uh, they're losing battles, but they don't stop. This is like a zombie army wanting to seize power. Lord Monckton, thank you for coming on with us today. Well, it's a pleasure to be back, Alex, and so soon after yesterday. And of course, I quite understand this is an important moment where... Yet again, an extreme leftist, effectively a Marxist or fascist government, they're the same, whichever side of the coin you look, has rammed through the carbon tax it had long been talking about. 
and it did so by buying off a couple of the independents who might otherwise have stood out and done the right thing and would have become instant national heroes if they had but they're set up for life financially now so they don't care it's a very shabby deal that's been done and I expected this to happen, to be honest. Uh, I thought that they would get it through, and I think they'll get it through the Senate as well. This will become law. But Tony Abbott, the leader of the opposition, has finally found his voice. He had been just a little bit too quiet on this issue. And then finally, he has decided to speak out and say, whatever it takes, and this is a blood oath, he's put it that way, he is going to overturn this carbon tax, even if they do get it through both houses. So this is going to be, if you like, a temporary suicide, and the patient will be revived as soon as this ghastly government that they've got now is thrown out. So I think there are, in fact, signs of hope in all this, because what has happened in Australia is there has been a real debate. By the way, and I should interrupt you here. won that debate, and the Australian government is now already a lame duck government, it can shove all the things through that it wants while it's still got the majority. But in a couple of years, it is going to go down, and really everybody knows this now, including itself, it's going to go down to a historic defeat. And all the bad measures it's taken, of which this is far and away the worst, will simply be undone by the incoming Liberal National Coalition. And, and uh, Lord Monk, just to interrupt, I should have prefaced in the introduction, you have had multiple trips to Australia. I know you have canvassed the country, speaking to crowds years ago of a few hundred. Uh, I've read thousands and thousands now everywhere you went, and that that was evidenced, uh, 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 your, your, your blitz through the countryside and cities was evidenced by the polls completely flipping uh, and uh, the people recognizing the horror of warrantless home inspections, all of it. So I should have prefaced that, that you're a true expert on this Australian issue, uh, because uh, can you uh, tell us how much time you've spent there and what you saw? Well, yes, I, was, I first was asked to go there in um, January, February of last year, and I went at the request of two retired engineers from Noosa, patriots, both of them, um, Kay Smith and John Smead, and they were absolutely determined that the other side of the case on the carbon tax should be fairly and squarely put by somebody who could command the headlines. And because the left like to attack me because I'm a peer and I'm an aristocrat and chinless wonder, if you like, um, I get publicity not because I seek it, but because they can't resist trying to tear me apart in public. And people watch this and they therefore hear that there is another side of the message. So I went right round Australia and you're quite right, thousands did turn out to the absolute horror and bafflement of the political class and the media there who had done their best to give it no coverage at all. And the second time I went out was just a couple of months ago. Again going round Australia, again huge crowds turning out everywhere. And that time they really organized a massive campaign to try to stop them letting me into the country, to try to have me banned at every venue I spoke at. They really tried to interfere. They sicked their so-called comedy team onto me from the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. They did all kinds of childish tricks. They rang me up at six in the morning and said, are you a member of the House of Lords? I said, yes, but without the right to sit or vote. Then they got onto the House of Lords and said, no, he hasn't got the right to sit or vote, therefore he isn't a member of the House of Lords, and we're going to write and tell him so. Huge kind of campaigns of personal vilification went on. But what was interesting was the reaction of the ordinary people who came to the meetings. They really wanted to hear the scientific and economic truth without any nonsense. And that's what I gave them. And in the end, for the first time ever, the National Press Club in Canberra decided to agree to allow a climate skeptic to give the other side of the argument. They'd never done this before. But finally, they decided that they couldn't any longer refuse the other side of their say. And so even though it was in the format of a debate in which I was allowed to debate with somebody from the other side, nevertheless, for an hour on national television, rebroadcast three times, I was able to put across, in an organized fashion, the arguments for why there isn't a problem with the climate and why, even if there is, it would cost ten times more to try to do anything about it than to pay for the relatively small amounts of damage that might arise if we don't. And that message went right around Australia, and they did some polling in both my trips. After my first trip, 
they found that in the months that I was there, opinion swung uh, 10 percentage points away from belief in global warming and towards a more healthily skeptical point of view. And that, they said, was a record. But this time, the same thing happened in one hour when the polling organization Roy Morgan did a minute-by-minute -minute tracking poll of 350 balanced selected audience who had buttons they could press to say who was winning. And at the end of that hour, I had shifted 9% of that audience in just one hour. And they said that that, to their knowledge, was unprecedented in the history of polling. They said never had so many people changed their minds so quickly. Now, why was this? It was because the media there had done their level best for years not to give the other side of the story. And when eventually the National Press Club decided it simply had to do this. For the first time, and I mean for the first time, many citizens of Australia who had never heard that even there was a serious argument against all this nonsense, finally heard it for the first time, the scales fell from their eyes, and they realized they had been misled. So simply amazing, simply amazing, Lord Monckton. Uh, uh, look, uh, Mark Tursick, the former Goldman Sachs operative, managing director, uh, managing uh, the head of the Nature Conservancy. He was in town here last week, and they're the ones that will we'll swap your government debt for your lands and carbon footprints. And our guys got an interview after his speech. He agreed to it, but when they came up and said, what about Obama's pledge to, quote, bankrupt the coal companies that supply half our power, he suddenly freaked out and said, I'm not going to talk to you, and, and ran off. And that's what I'm seeing everywhere. Al Gore won't debate you after many years of challenging. Uh, we have James Cameron. Uh, the director starts challenging people, then backs out. Uh, because it's so childish that they want to ignore all the real environmental issues, but instead guilt us all into paying them some type of you know, carbon tax, in many cases to individual groups. But I've seen this same thing. They won't debate me on radio when I, uh, they've set me up as a guest. As soon as I start bringing up facts, they say, that's it, I'm not doing this. So, so it, it was this attempted hoax, just to point out how far we've come, that no one could ever debate this. There's no scientists that don't agree with us. And it turns out it was all manufactured rubbish. I mean, is this a death blow? Because you would think it would be. Now they run an abject fear, and they've got the big mega money behind it. But they still just force it through, and now we see their cheerleaders all over U.S. British news <laughs> saying authoritarianism is good when it's for the earth. I mean, don't we just need to get down to calling them what they are? They don't think they're helping the earth. I've run into these people too much. They are cold-blooded, and when you show them you know the game, they're like vampires at high noon. They run. Oh, they run a mile. There's no doubt about it. They are running very, very scared indeed. They've seen what's happened to the Gillard government in Australia. It's made itself one of the most unpopular governments in the history of democracy because it has pushed this issue beyond all reason or sense, because otherwise it can't cling to coalition with the Greens who hold the balance of power. They've sold their soul for the sake of short-term power. They will be out of office certainly for a long time from the next election, and possibly forever. And other people watching around the world have seen the utter abject collapse of the Australian Labour Party in the polls, the hatred of it, which is now evident throughout Australia. And they've realised that if they try to do this anywhere else, they're going to get the same reaction. So their tactic has changed. Of course, they'll continue not to debate because the more this is debated, the more people wake up and realise there's another side to the story. The last thing they want is that. What they will do is they'll pick off industries one by one, starting with coal. This is happening in Canada, for instance, as we speak. The government had said very firmly it wasn't going to introduce a carbon tax, and then moments later, along comes Environment Canada, another of these lobbying groups which in fact operates under the guise of a government department, and it said, we're going to shut down the coal industry in Canada, and here are the regulations by which we're going to do it, and they got the backing of the Canadian government for this. Now, so far, these regulations haven't gone through the House, but I've been asked to do some costings on it. I've had a look at it, and it would be 10 times more expensive, in fact, 18 times more expensive 
to introduce regulations of this kind worldwide, like the Canadian ones, than it would be to sit back and just pay the cost of any climate related damage, even if the global warming was as much as they said it was going to be, and even if it was going to cause as much damage as they said it would, neither of which things is in the least bit likely to be true. So the fact is that on the arguments, these people are finished, they're on the ropes, they're holding endless inquiries into why it is that their public relations campaign has been so unsuccessful. The one thing they will not admit is the reason they failed is that they are not telling the truth and everybody can see that. Well, Lord Moncton, that was my next point. I saw uh, in the BBC yesterday, you know, the headline that top, you know, global warming uh, spokesman uh, says the problem is scientists aren't articulate and the global warming climate change group is just too scientific and doesn't have spokespeople. They've spent tens of billions. They've got all the slickest PR, Hollywood behind them. I mean, that's another grand hoax that, 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 that they're the little David and we're the big wicked Moncton, uh, you, you know, Goliath coming at them when it's the opposite. I mean, it's been ragtag people for 20 years being demonized with calls for your arrest, calls for my arrest. Uh, we're kooks, we're scum, we're liars, we're dangerous, we're Nazis, and, 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 and professors being run out and sued and just every form of persecution for our heresy, with all their slick PR, the truth is trumping them, and, and the dragon is writhing, claiming, claiming that we're big, mean bullies. I mean, is there no end to the unmitigated hubris that these uh, clowns exude? Well, for every hubris, as they used to say in ancient Greece, there is a nemesis, there is a reckoning. It is coming. It's already here, in fact. That's why the desperation of these people is becoming so evident. Al Gore, with his huge attempt at a relaunch, carefully timed to be September the 14th, because his advisers had told him what I thought might be the case, that we might see a record low uh, sea ice extent in the Arctic this um, summer. We didn't as it happened. It was just a little bit above the 2007 low. So that backfired on him. Then he made an utterly lacklustre lying speech about how we were all in the pay of big oil just as Previously, the tobacco industry had been paying spokesmen to lie about things, and there was smear tactics, and there was the usual parade of natural disasters, all of which were quite improperly blamed on global warming. These people are on the run. They, they can't believe how quickly this collapse has come after the massive propaganda budgets that they've spent. But the fact is that without the truth, it doesn't matter how much propaganda messages you try to get across. We saw this with Hitler. We saw this with Stalin and Mao. If you go on lying, eventually the people will see through you and the lies will not work however much you spend, however many guns you point at them, however many threats you make, however much you try and try and try again to denigrate and belittle those who disagree with you. The truth will out. People are now realizing that this has been staggeringly oversold, that if there's a problem at all, it is a small one, it's containable, it requires absolutely no action now. After all, there has been no global warming for a decade. That was a point that Al Gore very carefully concealed during his presentation when he was trying to attribute a lot of natural disasters. And it was a total year. bomb. Almost no one watched it. Well, in fact, they tried to claim that millions had watched it, but even that looks like a made-up figure. Uh, it looks as though something like 17,000 people worldwide watched it. This is a big turn-off now. The BBC has recently circulated a memo saying, for heaven's sake, stop doing climate change stories. The, there's nothing that loses us a million viewers every time you mention it than, than wretched climate change. They've all realised this is finished as an issue. And now they're desperately trying to get the last few fistfuls of taxpayers' dollars into their capacious trouser pockets before they all run away and hide. Well, this Lord Moncton, that's my point, is they mm. are, uh, I mean, I, I saw literally 20, 30, it was more than that, major uh, climate priest, uh, guilt priest, mm. uh, say, Al Gore, sit down, shut up, you can't do any good here, you're making us look bad. And they basically have now publicly stated they want to go with a stealth system, keep brainwashing the kids, where the seasons they are now teaching them are unnatural, any trees cut down are not renewable, 
Uh, they mainly just want to prey on the children now that they know people are awake and, and, and kind of go back underground and then just try to push through some new carbon taxes. Because as you said, they've openly stated that every time they now try to indoctrinate adults, people begin to uh, you know, basically, basically smell the liquor that made them sick the night before and they become nauseous. And so again, they're, they're, they're just trying to prey on children and uh, college students and others. But what about... Now, there's a way of dealing with that, Alex, and that is what we did in the UK. In fact, I was one of those who helped to draft the law when I was working for Margaret Thatcher in 10 Downing Street. And we put together a law, it was actually brought in a couple of years after I left Downing Street, but we were well on the way with it while I was still there. And that law made it illegal to subject children to political propaganda in schools. And it was that law that we were able to use to bring Al Gore's movie in front of the High Court and get the High Court to find that unless 77 pages of corrective guidance were sent round to every school in the land, that film couldn't be shown because it was naked political propaganda. So what I would recommend is that in those countries that don't have that law, they should introduce it because it gives parents then some power over these maniacal Marxist and fascist teachers. Because they can simply say to them, right, we're hearing from our kids that you're filling them with environmentalist propaganda, we're going to take you to the court for a criminal offence of propagandising children in school, and you can go to jail for that. And that makes our teachers in school just that little bit less badly behaved than they are, say, in the United States. So that's something I offer to the Republicans as a way out of this indoctrination of children. It's a very, very serious problem because children don't have enough mathematical, physical or economic knowledge to understand what rubbish this all is. It's a very potent message. We're saving the planet. Even the tiniest bit of extra CO2 is going to cause terrible damage. You can see how easy it is to say this nonsense and how very difficult it is to refute it unless the people you're talking to have some knowledge of the basic math and children don't. That's why this propaganda has succeeded and the way to stop it is to make it illegal. And point out that it's going on so that parents can go check out. I mean, I, I remember just last year, Al Gore was taped at a stadium, it was audio, telling uh, fifth graders that, uh, you know, your parents or their parents might not have liked black people, but uh, you know, people stood up to them and, and so, you know, good was done. Well, it's the same thing with climate change. You've got to confront your parents, you know best, and then we've seen others compare it to racism now. I mean, it's just so diabolical. And then telling children, go confront your parents, you know best. I mean, this is the state and this swollen, discredited, groping uh, creature uh, you know, in there in our face. My, my final question for you is this. My grandmother, uh, on my mom's side, uh, was living on her Social Security. She worked more than 40 years. Uh, and uh, you know my grandfather's been dead a long time, and, and they've frozen the cost of living expense. And I've gone over to her house sometimes in the summer, and it's 110 degrees here in Austin. She's got the windows open, and I say, why don't you have it open? She goes, well, I don't have the money because the, 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 the power prices have, have almost doubled in the last five years. Uh, Austin Energy's talking about a 60% increase in just the next three years. That's their official numbers. Uh, and, and, and they say it's for climate because they've shut down a bunch of power plants the last three years and they're shutting more down and only insiders like G are making money. And uh, I, mean, I mean, it's literally to even cool a small house now, thousands a month instead of a couple, you know, 300, 400, 500 dollars. I mean, in some cases it's more than double. And now they're saying more, more, more. Now you got people living all over the north of this country now, a new phenomenon where their electricity gets turned off, mainly old people, and they're found frozen to death in their homes or they die of carbon monoxide by opening up their stoves and huddling near them, the poor. I mean, hundreds and hundreds are now. Uh, every I, I think this is terrifying. It is the utter callousness of these wretches that they will condemn old people, vulnerable people, sick people to death, literally to death, by freezing in the cold weather or boiling in the hot weather when cheap electricity delivered from coal is readily, easily and these days safely available. It's an outrage that they're doing this, that they're literally 
killing their fellow men by the hundreds of thousands all over the world. Of course, it's by, it's by the millions in Africa, where they're not being allowed to have electricity, where you've got the goons going in in the name of saving the planet and closing down villages because they want to declare that an area where only trees can be grown so that they can gain some sort of expensive carbon credit from the, the West and to heck with the people who are scratching a living there. This is what's now happening. These ideologues, these crazies, with their zombie-like, I think that, that word you used earlier in the program is absolutely right, they are zombies marching to destroy as much of humanity as they possibly can and to get as rich as possible as they can doing it. And anyone who is a Christian has the duty to oppose them root and branch. This attack on the coal industry, which is now the next target, now they've lost the overall battle. They're picking off the industries one by one, starting with coal, well, the answer is that the coal industry has got to stop being so soppy about it. It's got to start fighting back. It's got well, to sir, say, that's what I was going to point out, is that yeah. you know, for my grandmother, I can give her some money and demand she turn her air conditioner on or turn the heat on in the winter. But yeah. you know, in the West, it's killing people by the hundreds and hard-shipping millions. And they admit they want a post-industrial world, but you've broken down the numbers. Over a decade, if that Copenhagen Treaty would have been put in, a billion conservatively, they don't know 15 million children starve to death a year. They don't know it's 25 to 30 million counting adults. They don't know that more than half the world's on $2 a day or less. They don't know it's a death sentence. And talking to the hippies and well-meaning liberals who aren't diabolical people like Maury Strong or Al Gore, they, uh, and I, I mean, I want you to morally speak to them because this isn't a game and 51% of our power is coal. It's totally clean. Nothing but carbon uh, dioxide comes out the top and water vapor. They've got federal, federal devices on it scanning it and that's why they had to list carbon dioxide as a pollutant as a way to shut it down. I mean, our whole society here, America is built on cheap energy and, and, and now, on the way our financial actuaries have been established, this is going to bankrupt poor people. I mean, this this is affecting my grandmother. This is affecting people everywhere. And I have these. these I think these, what's going to happen, Alex, is is that uh, states like Texas, for instance, whose governor is not going to take any prisoners on this, they're just going to eventually say to the federal government, "We are no longer going to comply with those laws which are insane and cruel to our people." Texas has just had a long, hard drought. Of course, this was immediately blamed on global warming by the usual suspects. It wasn't. It was a blocking high. It's a well-known natural phenomenon. It's happened before. It happened in the 1930s. It's happening again. It'll happen again the next time the sun goes into this stage of its solar cycle. But the fact is in Texas, in Maine, in places where they are more independent-minded, they're beginning to say, why should we any longer listen to a federal government which has literally gone mad and which is so cruel that it no longer cares about its own very poorest and most vulnerable people. And so to, to those of you who are the kind of wet, soggy liberals who think that the environment is a nice, cozy, soft issue and there's no cost to being green, yes, there is. It is a cost in misery, it is a cost in disease, it's a cost in cold, it's a cost in heat, it's a cost in human lives, a cost which you are carelessly forcing the poor and vulnerable people of your nation and of other nations to endure. So get off your moral high horse. You're on the wrong horse. The moral arguments are all with us who have questioned this nonsense from the start. There needs to be more balance, more rationality, more reason. We need to make sure before we ever get into a scare like this ever again, that the math is done independently by people unconnected with the small, narrow, left-wing group of scientists that has been pushing this agenda from the start and then pretending that the majority of scientists believe it. The majority of scientists don't believe a single word of it. That most of them have never even thought about it. Before. And that hoax is coming out. And in final conclusion, uh, yeah. uh, Lord Monckton, and the reason I made the point about my grandmother is I get these emails saying, you must be paid by the coal industry. I've been paid zero by the coal industry. I own zero coal stock. I understand it's more than half our power. I understand it's clean. I've done the research in the last decade, and I know that they have a plan to shut it down. Uh, it, 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 it is so diabolical. In closing, it, people say, well, why do you represent coal? I represent poor people that get their power from it. And again, it's a, it's a death sentence here. It's more of a death sentence in the third world. Why at the heart of it is Maury Strong, the UN, why do they love a post-industrial world? Money, power, and glory.
in their hands and not in yours or mine. That is what it has always been about. That is what it's about now. That's what it always will be about until we get rid of these people. And let us turn their own devices on them. They were planning to establish a European Environmental Criminal Court so that the likes of me could be brought in front of it and locked up for years for daring to say there isn't a problem with the climate and for saying so for scientific and economic reasons. Let's do it to them. Every time they produce bogus, bent science, fraudulent graphs, bent graphs, dodgy data, dodgy dossiers, then let's go after them and prosecute them for straightforward, old-fashioned criminal fraud and lock them up. And every time a pensioner dies because she can't afford to heat her home, let's go and get one of those bad, mad scientists who has been exaggerating the scare and fiddling the data and send them to prison for a very, very, very long time. Well, we've come a long way thanks to your leadership and others. Uh, Lord Christopher Monckton, scienceandpublicpolicy.org. We've had it up on screen while you've been speaking. Thank you so much for spending your time late at night over in England with us. Well, it's a real pleasure, Alex. Keep up the good work. We will keep your nation and mine free, whatever they try to do to stop us. So God bless America. Well, God bless you, sir, and England and the whole world. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, if you're a new viewer, it's important to understand this isn't a joke, this isn't a game. Uh, these authoritarians are here. Every generation faces tyranny. It always comes in a new guise. It's not going to look like Tojo or Hitler. It's not going to look like Stalin. It comes in the form of these environmental power-grabbing priests. Now, I know this show is airing on some TV systems around the country. We also post it to YouTube. We're hundreds of thousands a day, millions a week are watching it. If you want to see it live and first, and archive with all the other material and eight years of information, become a PrisonPlanet.tv subscriber. That's PrisonPlanet.tv or InfoWarsNews.com. We will defeat these people because good folks around the world are standing up to these control freaks. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the InfoWars newsroom. We'll see you back tomorrow.